Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise for the purpose uh, of placing in nomination the name of the Honorable Jim Jordan for the position of uh, Speaker of the House at the direction of the Republican yeah. Congress. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, two weeks and one day ago, I was on this uh, House floor and in this chamber defending uh, my very good friend and our former Speaker, Mr. McCarthy, uh, from an effort to vacate the chair. And in the course of that speech, I made the remark that uh, uh, those who did this, uh, whether intentionally or unintentionally, we're going to put the Congress in a state of chaos and the country into a state of uncertainty. I think the last two weeks have vindicated that observation. But we have a chance today to end that chaos and to end that uncertainty. Now, when these races happen, there's always a lot of hard things said on both sides of the aisle. Uh, there's a lot of finger pointing that goes on. I don't intend to be involved in any of that today. I think the decision in front of us is far, far too important for that. But I am very proud, very proud, to place in nomination the name of our good friend, my good friend, our Republican candidate for speaker, the Honorable Jim Jordan of Ohio. knowing uh, Jim Jordan for a long time. I've been in Congress for a long time. So in his, for his entire period in the House, I've had the honor of serving with my friend. Now, my friend is not exactly a shrinking violet. You don't win uh, national championships in college. You don't come to this floor with a sincere set of beliefs and a desire to make a change uh, and be shy about it. And my friend is not a shy person. But I've learned some things about him over the years. Uh, he is a person of absolute personal integrity. I have never once had to question something that he told me. He's an honorable man. Also, I think we all know he's a pretty direct man, too. I don't think anybody in here on any issue of any substance would have to guess where Jim Jordan is going to stand. He doesn't deceive. He doesn't dissemble. He simply tells you straight up, this is what I believe, this is why I think it's the right thing to do for the country, and that's what I'm going to try and accomplish, and I'm going to work with you in any way that I can to do it. Now, the other thing I think we've found in the last couple of weeks is what it takes to be a speaker. And the one thing I know, never having been one and never having aspired to be one, uh, that uh, it takes a spine of steel to do this job. My friend has that kind of determination has that kind of character, has that kind of spine. And I think uh, the next speaker is going to need that quality, and I know my friend has it in great abundance. Now, if you're a Republican, it ought to be a pretty easy decision, my friends. You know, this is a, somebody who believes what we believe and has fought for and shown that over and over again. You know, when I first got to know him, a lot of his focus was on spending. That's exactly where the focus of this House ought to be. Now, he's laid out a plan, not just a short-term plan, as to how we deal with the appropriations process. I'm an appropriator. I think I know that uh, that's not the root of the problem. But unlike any other speaker we've had, he's had the courage to talk about a long-term plan and to get at the real drivers of debt. And we all know what they are. We all know it's Social Security. We all know it's Medicare. We all know it's Medicaid. No president of either side has been willing to deal with this. No speaker of either side has been willing to deal with this. My friend, our former colleague, John Delaney, and I offered a plan. I still file it every year. John's not here anymore. To go back and do in, in 1983 what we did then and address Social Security, we never can get any help. 
This is a guy that wants to create a debt commission, a bipartisan debt commission, and get at the roots of our spending problem. That takes courage. And Republicans ought to support somebody with that kind of courage. Now, he's not only focused on one thing. I don't know anybody that's done more to highlight and talk about the border disaster that is underway right now as we speak. You know, I had the privilege of serving here when uh, uh, Jay Johnson was Secretary of Homeland Security. I have a very high opinion of Jay Johnson. I think he's one of the finest public servants I ever met. And he was asked on one occasion to define what was the crisis on the southern border. And he said, any time you have more than 1,000 illegal entries a day, you have a crisis. We have 10 or 11 times that every single day. And in that tide of humanity that's coming across, there is a boatload of fentanyl coming to kill tens of thousands of all of our constituents. There are human traffickers who are taking advantage of young men and young women, and frankly, predators in our own country, and they're bringing them across, not by the tens or the twenties or the dozens, but by the hundreds and the thousands. Yeah. There are amongst that flow of people, people that wish us ill, people who are not fleeing from oppression, people who are terrorists or criminals that are coming into our country for no good reason. Now, that is not an immigration problem. That's a border security problem. They are not the same thing. We can, we can debate immigration. That's a worthy debate. We should never have to debate border security. Nobody's highlighted that issue like my friend Jim Jordan. Nobody's done more as a committee chairman to move legislation that would meaningfully deal with this problem. And this, my friends, on both sides of the aisle, but with all due respect, particularly this administration and my friends on the other side, you need to look at this. You need to look at this seriously. Don't confuse it with immigration. The, you ain't going to have immigration reform until we have border security. It cannot be done. This has been the number one champion of that, one of the number one issues that we have. Finally, I want to talk about something that can bring us together. There are a lot of things we disagree on, legitimately so. Most of us do not disagree about the security of the state of Israel. All of us. All of us on both sides of the aisle reacted with horror and with deep sympathy and with legitimate outrage at the crime that was perpetrated against the people of Israel in the last week. All of us, and all of us know that they are within their rights to respond forcefully and swiftly to defend their people and punish those who brought that upon them. So at a moment of crisis, and we are in a moment of crisis, we should come together and act. And we know we can't do that without a Speaker of the House. Now, it's a narrow majority, but my friends and I are in the majority. Uh, and we need to produce a Speaker. We have a candidate who we know where he will stand on issues that are important. We know where he's going to stand on spending because it's where he's always stood. It's not like he's changed over the course of his career. I know what he's going to do on the border. I've read H.R. 2. I've seen what his committee produced. And it's not just money, it's policy and change that will provide security for the American people. And finally, and I say this on a bipartisan basis, I know he will stand up for Israel, and I know in that area we can come together. That crisis is on us now. We may get a request almost any time to act. We need to be able to act. 
My friend will act on that crisis. He's shown his whole career. So it's with a great deal of pride that I have the privilege of nominating my friend, our chairman of the Judiciary Committee, but a person whose principles you know, whose actions you can trust, and who in a time of crisis will respond with the leadership we need. Jim Jordan.